Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm George. Stav is over there getting ready to run his car on the dyno. Uh, really, really excited, this car's never been on the dyno. Finally made it, racing on Sunday. We're not just here chasing numbers, we're also giving the tuner the best opportunity to tune this car. Um, so it's getting a little out of hand to do this kind of stuff on the street and we're pretty much worried about safety at this point and also the legality of going as fast as we need to to properly log this car on the street. So uh, we're here to get it on the dyno, make some jam, see what kind of numbers we're gonna make. Tuner's gonna see how, the, you know, how healthy the motor looks like and so on and so forth. Um, and then we're gonna get ready for Sunday in a couple of days to go half mile racing with this car. So really excited to see Stav rip it up on the track. But uh, yeah, this thing is, I'd say it's pretty much ready. Hacked together by a couple malakas in a home garage. Uh, he's gonna be running a little bit of juice just to kind of keep everything in boost between the gears. But I guess we're gonna start. Gustav, what's going on? I uh, was just heading the log to Nick. Nice. So we are remote tuning, yeah, just yeah. so everyone knows. Uh, Nick's all the way up in Fremont working for 034 Motorsport. So they've graciously <laughs> lent us his time so we can get this car tuned. So Stav is remote tuning and we got the car here on the dyno down in LA essentially. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> Stuff. Start on cylinder one. Shit. That's okay. just below, right around 80. 80 psi. Damn it. All right, let me let me try cylinder two. So cylinder one is 80. That's not good. Nope. That's not Hold good. on. Let's try that again. Maybe it was just a fluke. Yeah, just under 80 on that one. Okay, let me hook up uh, cylinder two. All right, go for cylinder two. That's about 90, still less than 120 that we measured before. Cylinder two is 90. All right, let's hook up cylinder three. All right, go for cylinder three. Cylinder three is at sixty. Oh boy, this is not looking good. All right, go stuff. Sixty. Well, I say there's a running theme, stuff that you have low compression. All right, so if you're wondering why we went from the dyno room to back here in the garage, uh, 
multiple times. And in fact, you know what, Stav, I'll just let you kind of uh, mm -hmm. kind of talk about it a little bit since it's your car. Kind of give us a state. We started out on the dyno. Correct. We started up on the dyno uh, at a lower boost setting of 33 pounds of boost. And the car made, what, 470 or 430 or something like that? Yeah, it was like 430 to like Correct. 480 we were kind of bouncing between on the dyno. Correct. And no matter how much boost we threw at it, it would never make more power. So we decided to take it off the dyno because we knew something was hurt. And we didn't, obviously didn't have the tools with us to check it on the dyno. So we brought it back to the ha uh, garage. And we found out we have low compression across all the cylinders and in some cylinders very low compression and and pretty much we checked this the last time we checked compression was about maybe 30 days ago uh, i saw between 125 and 130 125 130 130 per cylinder which is about average i mean you're supposed to have no more than five percent per, uh, per cylinder uh but we must have heard in the last uh last month or so i mean we threw not not more boost but less boost than we did on but on, on a much larger turbo it's it, you know we originally spec this motor for 700 horsepower and i mean this tur this setup on on this amount of boost probably making way north of it uh it might be time to refresh the motor so do you think in general um either we lifted the head or do you think it's possible we hurt the rings during the logging because at one point stuff you were throwing about 45 46 pounds of boost on logging on the street correct yeah well was then we turned it down for the dyno so that we could turn it up and get it dialed in but i honestly think we didn't lift the head because there's no uh, sign of it there's no oil in the coolant uh the plugs are dry i think we honestly just heard some rings you think so so i think if we pull this apart rehone it we could probably throw this setup back together and make some make some jam yeah well, I mean, just to kind of give everyone an update again, you know, we were on the dyno getting stuff ready. We got everything sorted. In fact, KT Mortaring, who was the shop that we used the dyno at, uh, even helped us sort some boost leak issues, uh, right. which we sorted there on the spot. But for some reason, again, I'll throw a screenshot of one of the dyno runs between 6,000 RPM and 8,000. The car just went flat, didn't flat. make any power, didn't do nothing. And the more boost we threw at, the less power it made. It was so weird. Yeah. No one knew what it was. No one knew what was going on. In fact, uh, you know, we were over here scratching our heads as, as the, you know, the 24 valve, uh, 32, 34 PSI made 750. We were throwing nearly 40 pounds of boost on the dyno and couldn't crack 500. And now we come back and the first thing we do is a compression check and we find out that a, now the motor has lost about 50 to 60% of its compression. In fact, one of the cylinders at 40 PSI. So, Steph, you made 500 wheel with, with two and a half cylinders. Two and a half cylinders. <laughs> and, and Honestly, it, this, is, this is not uh, the worst upsetting news. This, we, uh, we had a good run with this motor. We, really, we originally built this motor for 700 horsepower. I mean, we were like, oh, we're going to, you know, we, weren't, we had a 64, 66. We thought we were going to, I mean, a 67, 66. We thought we were going to throw like 30 PSI and be, be, be done. And then it's more power, nitrous, bigger turbo. So, uh, definitely going to have to come back for round two on this one. Um, maybe do a leak down test next on this setup and see where exactly the issue is. I do believe it's rings because there's no sign that the head lifted. But overall, it still drives great. That's the funny part. 500 wheel at 40 pounds of boost on this turbo just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and today is Sunday, so we weren't able to make it to shift sector for the half mile Correct. race. So we're kind of a little bit bummed out on that. But happily, you know, luckily nothing happened on the way. You drove to the dyno and drove back, back without Correct. an issue. But again, that's something we're going to have to refresh. And I want to kind of touch on something real quick. You won't see a lot of this kind of post or these kind of videos or these kind of information coming out from people admitting that, hey, something has hurt, something there's a problem, especially with a car with this much visibility. A lot of people keep this stuff to themselves. Yeah. They don't want to say anything. Oh, I didn't make it to the dyno. I'm going to make it there next month. And they end up having to rebuild their entire car the and not say closed. anything. I didn't make it to the dyno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got stuck in traffic, right? I got stuck in traffic. But, you know, again, this is the whole point of learning so all of you guys can see what's involved in the car it's just, like we we always joke around right one step forward 15 step back this is part of you know the the sidestepping the the but, issues that as you know i mean like this is not a fresh motor by any means we've been running this nitrous 40 something pounds of boost the car has been flawless for so long the tune even the logs still show great it just needs a refresh and we'll be back making some jam pretty very soon all right. So, and what is the plan now? You're thinking of just taking apart this motor, re-ringing, and then coming back, or what's the plan? I honestly believe, for a very cheap price, I could pull this apart, send it to a machine shop, have it rehoned, O-ring the block, and put it right back together. Because I, you do know, you do know, I have all that whole new setup that I don't want to use at the moment. Because I honestly believe this setup will make four digits and and be reliable. I mean, it, it's 
It's been quite the setup. The new fueling situation is awesome. I'm using less than 40% of my weight state duty cycle at above 40 PSI. Or it, stop or, aside from doing all that and using another 12 valve, I mean, it's, it's sitting there. It's right for the picking. You already got the transmission. You already got the catch can. You already got the clutch. I mean, why don't you just go for the whole package? You just go with the 24 valve, man. You're almost there. You just one step away, stop. <laughs> no, you one I'm, step away. Hey, listen, that motor works really great on that dolly, but ultimately, <laughs> but honestly, so Cleo, <laughs> you have to admit that this 12 valve has been a beast. We put it together ourselves. Uh, maybe there's some, maybe there's an issue. We need to go, do something different with the uh, gaps on the rings. Maybe, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out once we pull something it apart. Something we need to learn more or less. You think? Correct. I mean, because yeah. as we, as we increase the power level and what we're putting through it, you got to remember the guys that are making the power that we're trying to push here are driving the car for 30 seconds at a time on a track. We're literally driving it on the street. We're be, we're giving it nitrous. Yeah, and some of those guys see major issues driving it for only 30 seconds. They're Correct. finding things that you know may go wrong with the car or something with the chassis. Meanwhile, you're daily driving this to work. Correct. I gotta say, I got your new fuel set up in the car. I was hoping to make I more forgot, power. I forgot to mention that you also got my, my surge tank in there too. I know, but it's no longer yours. What's it called? <laughs> but, but that that what it's called, and I mean that that setup now I'll never have fueling issues. We just keep we're moving five steps forward, ten back, but we're making great improvement every time. I mean this this car has been fun. It still drives, but I think it's time to. So as it stands, mm -hmm. it's twenty four valve one, twelve valve. I mean, Zero. not just, really, because what you think about it, like, I made how much? 500 wheel at the end of the day? 497, that's what it was? Two and a half cylinders? Two and a half cylinders, so you times that by, let's just do... And I, only, and I only made 754 when I ran out of fuel, so Stav made almost 500 wheel with two and a half cylinders here, yeah. and I used all Who's six. counting, though? Who's counting? I mean, who's counting, man? <laughs> Guys, a again, we want you guys to take this information with a grain of salt. This is our experience, the, the things, the struggles, the, the, the obstacles are coming our way, and we wanted to let everybody know as we experience them. So, um, again, you know, it's unfortunate but it's a small setback and we're going to get back and get stuff back to making power at least going on the dyno and sorting the car out and then actual to a race event so um i was hoping to really go to shift Cedric. that was going to be fun a lot of fast well we, we paid we paid for the event Correct. we got everything set up. we got the hotel and unfortunately this kind of stuff happens and it's a five and a half hour drive and we're like shit and we found out this was saturday evening after the dyno or like you know, what do we do? We right. have no other spare motor to throw in that's going to be able to make up the power. So we just couldn't get something together in time, unfortunately. I know it's cool that KT Motor had that really cool dyno where you could drive over and it's like flat surface for such a lowered car. Like some of them, you have to go on ramps. That was a really nice dyno. Yeah, yeah. and again, shout out to the guys at KT. Yeah. Super guys, Vincent, uh, uh, Kim, the guy... The whole crew there, uh, the hospitality, everyone there. Thank you again for the support. Thanks for kind of taking on uh, a couple Audis with uh, a couple guys with their their older Audis to kind of see what kind of power it made. But unfortunately, I mean, we were looking forward to it too. They said, you know, oh, the the most uh, a car has ever made on their dyno. A twenty. It was a twenty, and, and guys with this kind of setup, especially even twelve valves, are making eight whoa, nine whoa, a wait, thousand wait, wheel whoa, horsepower. What do you mean even twelve valves? I'm just saying because you guys are at disadvantage because you guys have twelve valves less than the normal twenty four. Correct. Right, less things to valve float and all that other things, but we'll be back. Uh, correct. We'll correct. take the next week to leak down test it and figure out: Do I want to build my spare block with the new setup, or fix the, the block that's in the car? Well, and stop. The you know, we know we we have the nitrous setup. We know that's working. We got the new zona rotor, and and just kind of we haven't told anyone this. You also upgraded again. Correct. So you went from the 105 69s zona rotor to what? The 115 69s, uh, which is basically a, from a 72 mil to a 76 mil. AKA 1200 kit, right? So AKA we, MMS 1200, correct. So I, just to kind of keep in mind, guys, uh, we got the turbo system running right, everything else, no boost leaks, but unfortunately the That's motor. That's funny about that turbo because what? it's such a... It's such a large package and a small housing yeah. that even the guys at the dyno didn't. I had to like literally pull up the, the spreadsheet on the on the on the turbo for them to believe that that's how much power that turbo should be making. They're like, that, that's a 62, 66. I'm like, no, no, no. much bigger, <laughs> much bigger. <laughs> All right, so uh, Slav, again, I'm sorry uh, to see this, but small sidestep. We'll have this motor out. We'll get it replaced. and We'll get you back to making some boost and then uh, competing at a race event. So Stav, uh, any last words you want to say before we take this episode to a close? As always, go 12 valve, not 24 valve. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you guys for watching. Um, and again, thank uh, you to everyone who's helped on the project. I'm going to give correct. a short list here. 034 integrated engineering george who's helped me over the last week we got the search tank only, only the last week only the last week yeah only the last week before that he was actually <laughs> useless no but what's his name nick 
what's his name? Nick, my tuner, he's helping with multiple logs overnight. What's the name? We're going to be back and we're going to be making some four digit power very soon. Correct, correct. Really excited for you, stuff. As always, gapping 24 valves very soon again. With all six cylinders. With three and a half. If I had three and a half, I'd break that record. I'm telling you. We love you all. Thank you guys for the support. And again, uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. I'll touch on it real quick. We're fabricating and making a downpipe for the RS3. I've kind of ordered a bunch of these pie cuts. Uh, so we're going to be kind of fitting and kind of seeing how that goes on the RS3. Uh, we got some flanges on the way we're going to be working on. Uh, so that that project. Silver? Oh, yeah. You got silver? Best car. Yes, best best car. Waste came, you, came in. You buy silver because it's cheaper? Uh, yeah, they right. don't paint it? No, no, no. This is the most expensive version you can get it. Not really. But uh, this is Tiles 44 millimeter gate finally came in for the RS3, which is really exciting because that's going to kind of give us the opportunity to make all that stuff. And we're going to be fabricating it here using our TIG welder. And I'm really excited. It's the first thing we're going to be fabricating. Anyway, we'll touch on that on the next episode. Later, Malakas. Thank you for watching. This is Stav. I'm George. We'll catch you guys in the next episode.